We've seen the videos, best animals for 10 gallon, 20 gallon, 55, 120 gallon enclosures, but what about the micro guys? Today we're going over the top five reptiles that'll fit in a five gallon enclosure for their whole life. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wicked Swicked Reptiles, stick around. Of all the questions I get, one of the most common is what can fit in this enclosure? I have a 10 gallon enclosure in my basement, what can fit in there? But maybe none more than, what about nano enclosures? Exoterra sells them, Zoomed sells them. So there must be reptiles that can fit in there their whole life, right? Not really, we're gonna cheat a lot for this one. But let's start off with number five, morning geckos. I personally would rather you keep them in a 10 gallon enclosure or bigger, but you technically could keep them in a five gallon their whole life. This is a five gallon enclosure. It's a little tiny micro one. It's eight inches by eight inches by 12 inches tall. I don't really think you should keep any reptiles in this for their whole life, but if you did, a morning gecko might be the only one that would fit. And I'll even go as far to say, I only condone keeping baby morning geckos in here, but I mean, if you look at the size of a morning gecko compared to this, it kind of works. The reason you'd want morning geckos in the first place is they're all females, they're all parthenogenic, which means they don't need a male to breed, which makes sense because there's no males. We don't need men at all! <laughs> They're super duper cute and they cohab well with things like dart frogs. I have morning geckos in most of my dart frog enclosures. I just think they work really, really great. And the diet is easy. You wanna feed them things like fruit flies and also prepared diet that you'd feed to like a crested gecko, that type of idea. Do your research first. This is not a care guide, but just kind of a highlight of cool things that can fit in nano enclosures. Now I would say these are not really great for handling this species. The interesting thing is if you did need to move them and they drop their tail, which does happen, don't worry about it. They actually do grow their tails back. Okay, figure it out. But they're so small and fragile, I wouldn't really recommend that you handle them anyway. I mean, a bearded dragon is great because it does this. A morning gecko is gonna be wild. If they get out in your house, good luck catching them. You'll have to do a little sneak attack because you'll never be faster than them. Number four, jumping spiders, which are not reptiles or amphibians. They're inverts, they're arachnids, they're spiders. And to make this list, I had to put something because spoiler, there are not five animals that I would recommend keeping in a five gallon enclosure for any length of time. But people ask me all the time to talk about jumping spiders. It is the largest group of spiders in the entire world. You can find them on all continents except for Antarctica. There's over 6,000 species of them and I am not an expert on any of them. But I've got some really cool homies that are, and I do a lot of research and watch their videos. So basically an expert now, is that how it works? For real, they're all small. They're none of them are big, right? I know tarantulas are a big thing and I'm not gonna be talking about them in this video, but jumping spiders are really great for people like me who are terrified of most spiders, but jumping spiders are cute. They are freaking adorable. They're even used for commercials nowadays because even people who think that bugs are gross, although they're rachnids, think that these guys are cute. And for the most part, depending on the species that you get, and I would do your research on which ones to get, they're not that expensive. They're not expensive to take care of. They're gonna eat things like fruit flies or other insects as they get bigger. Again, I am not an expert. I'm just letting you know if you have a five gallon and you're dead set on keeping something, a jumping spider might be something to do more research on and maybe get eventually. Now these guys again are really fast. So if you're looking for something that you can handle, I wouldn't really recommend a jumping spider. If they get out in your house, best of luck finding them. They are really, really fast. 12 miles an hour. Ain't that Carl Lewis? I actually have one because Michelle brought it home from work. It was hanging out in the ceiling somewhere and it's not really like, it's kind of boring. I wouldn't recommend just getting one from outside. There's a lot of really great breeders out there and I would go that route. Can you tell I don't know anything about jumping spiders besides they can fit in five gallon enclosures? Number three, baby geckos and frogs. This is breaking the rule, because normally on these lists, I say, oh, we can live in this enclosure forever. I don't really think there's anything reptiles that can live in five gallons forever. 
But I do think that baby crested geckos, I do breed crested geckos. I've got a few of these nano enclosures that I do keep them in along with 10 gallon enclosures as well. And I think that it's okay for the first few months of their life, but after that, you definitely have to upgrade them. Same thing if you have, I don't know, baby dart frogs are another great example. A lot of people keep them in tubs or Tupperware, things like that. To me, I prefer to keep them in enclosures that you can see that just look nice on the shelf. A friend of mine has a whole bunch of these five gallon enclosures that are actually shorter. They're eight by eight by eight cubes. So it's really up to you. But again, you will need to upgrade. This is not a permanent solution. It's kind of breaking the rule, but I wanted to include something because reptiles are freaking amazing. That's the focus of this channel. And I wanted to answer the question without just being like a two second answer. You can't keep anything in five gallon enclosures, which would have been accurate. This might be the shortest video ever that I've ever made. Cause like, just get a bigger enclosure, literally a 10 gallon tall enclosure, a 12 by 12 by 18 costs next to nothing. If you buy it used, just, just, just in the big, you can put more stuff in them. Okay. Let's move on. Here's something that can go into a five gallon enclosure forever. Isopods, which are not reptiles, but I have isopods in almost all of my frog and reptile enclosures. They do a great job of cleaning up waste, basically waste product of the animals, of course do spot cleaning, but just in case, right? They do a really great job for bioactive enclosures. They're basically necessary. And there's a bunch of different ones that look super duper cool. Again, I'm not an expert on isopods. The ones that I keep are powder oranges, powder blues, uh, dairy cows, like I keep the really easy stuff that does a really good job of cleaning up and does well in the enclosures that I have, but I am by no means an expert at all. However, in order to take care of them is really easy. Give them some snake shed or grains of rice or uh, vegetable matter. Like this is not a care guide, of course, but you just throw in scraps of things that cost you next to nothing anyway, in order to feed them. You can make really beautiful enclosures in these tiny spaces. Use like twigs to make it look like trees. So if you're zoomed in, it looks like an actual ecosystem, but really it's some moss, tiny plants and some sticks. You can literally make one of these and source the isopods from your backyard. And a lot of different species of isopods are really bold. So you'll give them leaf litter, but you'll see them crawling all over the place anyway. So I think they're kind of perfect. And a lot of people are really obsessed with isopods. I, I mean, I just use them because they clean up things really good and they're fun to breed and fun to look at. And I always liked the little roly polies in my yard when I was a kid, which is what these are. So to me, they're interesting, but I don't keep them as pets where a lot of people do. And if you're keeping inverts, there's really very few as easy as isopods. Now, of course you could keep other inverts too, but I am not an invert guy. Do your research. There's a bunch of awesome channels. If you want to know stuff about spiders and other inverts, uh, tarantula cat, the tarantula collective, like there's a bunch of them. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus. I would go to those ones and do your research there. I'm not the guy, but if you want to know about 10 gallons, 20 gallons, all like there's a whole playlist right here just for you. Okay, number one, moss. <laughs> I had such a tough time making this list reasonable. I saw things from like dwarf seahorses and fish, but like that's too far away. In most enclosures, if you make bioactive enclosures anyway, you're gonna use moss of some sort. There's a bunch of different types. I use it in all of my enclosures, different types. And a lot of people, I don't know, like all I get on Instagram now is I looked at a few plant accounts and all I see is like, oh, in a thumbtack container or a Tic Tac container, these tiny little ecosystems. And I think they're amazing. So if you wanted, you could have something super duper tiny, even smaller than five gallons, one gallon, half a gallon, Tic Tac container, whatever. And you can put moss in there, a little bit of dirt, a tiny little stick, small little plants, and it looks beautiful. Even if you only keep, I don't know, The Pamelios are making noise. That's the only reason I got these frogs, by the way, which actually live in tiny little enclosures right now because they're little. Anyway, you can do a little bit of more research on which ones to keep. I just think that living things of all sorts are pretty amazing. You could even keep different types of fungus in enclosures like this. I don't know. This whole list is kind of silly willy, silly goose stuff, but I wanted to answer the question, Adam, what can you keep in five gallon enclosures? I've got this question literally dozens, maybe hundreds of times, and I wanted to finally answer it in a video. So let me know, did, 
this video live up to expectations? Are you a little bit disappointed because I didn't tell you what you wanna hear? This is just the, what I think. Let me know in the comments section if I got it wrong. I'd love to know. And a special thanks, if you hit the like and subscribe button, you are what makes this channel go round. It takes nothing but a couple seconds of your time, changes this channel and the way that it's viewed by different viewers. And as always, a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing. You guys are awesome. You get videos early, extra stuff, discounts on the merch, you know about the really cool frogs that I got today and the plants that came along with them. They make crazy, no anyway, for as little as a dollar a month, you can be a Patreon supporter too. That's it, because I do videos twice a week. That means that I'll see you on Thursday.